Hey, how you doing guys? Lewis here with Fidevo. Now at the moment, I seemingly can't log on to Instagram or TikTok without seeing a content creator promote the latest AI tool, whether that's image generation, text, sound, video, or in today's case, 3D character generation. I feel like it's my duty to tell you about the latest AI editing tools, all done in just a few clicks. Now the There's a new tool called Wonder Studio that will seemingly take your scene, scan it for human subjects, and replace the human subjects with 3D characters, and include the right lighting on the character and also generate a clean play all with one click. Now, I'm often slightly wary of any product or tool that says it can do something with nothing more than a single click. It often requires a little bit more work than that. But today, from an After Effects based user who isn't entirely versed in 3D compositing, we're going to see if it can bring me into that world without knowing all the ins and outs. All right, guys, back home, got a cup of coffee, although it has kind of gone cold. Uh, let's jump into it. So before we start anything, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, this is a paid service, like Midjourney, ChatGPT, and uh, near enough, most AI tools now on the market, you do have to pay. Uh, I'm currently on the light plan, and it is quite limiting, um, I will have to say. So we get a max export resolution of 1080. Again, for social media, that's okay. If you want to do anything a little bit more professional, we would have to jump up to the pro subscription. Let's have a look at this here. So on the light plan, we've got 1080p max export, five gigabyte of storage space. That is for your videos to be uploaded. 150 seconds of processed video. So that means if you wanted to do any long form uh, video, uh, so that means if you wanted to do any long form um, videos, you would have to start deleting previous renders. Uh, where of course on the pro version, we've got up to 600 seconds, uh, vastly different and a max export at 4K. Um, we can see here, these are the introductory prices that we have. Um, or of course, if you go annual, which is paid up front, um, it would be slightly cheaper. I am on the light, so that will affect uh, my current run through with the application. But this is the home page, uh, very, very user friendly. In fact, the tutorial that we're about to run through um, feels very primitive because it gives you a step by step basis um, without the help of someone like me. But we have our recent projects here uh, that I've been working on. Of course, we might be familiar with this as we've just seen it. Uh, in the int introductory element of the uh, tutorial. And uh, yeah, you know, very basic stuff if we needed to rename it. So Fidevo intro, boom, all sorted. Uh, but to get started with creating some CG characters, we're gonna go to create new project. And we've got two pop-ups, live action advanced, live action easy. Again, for the more advanced elements of uh, the software, we would have to upgrade. So let's just go with live action easy. This is the user interface. If you used Premiere Pro, Resolve, Final Cut Pro, you know, it's very familiar. We've got a media pool to our left, a timeline down the bottom, some effect properties over to the right, and the viewing panel in the forefront. Very similar to everything else that we're familiar with. And of course, we have different pop-ups throughout, such as output settings uh, for your video. And with that, let's import our clip, which is here. Wonder Studio test. Um, while that's uploading, um, uh, we do have a My Assets folder here. So in regards to storage space, which is included in your plan, this is what it's referring to. And these are all of the different video clips I've taken from the Fedivo library to upload to, uh, to generate some sort of tests. Uh, so you don't always have to re-upload the video clip if you've made a render and you're like, do you know what? I actually don't want uh, Sam the alien, I want this character to be Beast Boy the robot. We can go in and find the video clip rather than upload it again. So we're going to take our video clip and we're going to drag it into the center. Now it is on our timeline and it does say edit up here, but you can't really do any edits, so to speak. Um, this is more for just reviewing, I guess you could say, and to also analyze the frames in order to tell Wonder Studio, hey, I want this character to be this alien or this robot. So with that looking okay, I'm gonna go to next 
And again, we've got here now a pop-up that just says scan frame for actors. So this is scanning and we can also go ahead and go over here and select scan frame for actors because it works in the background. It's all cloud-based and very, uh, very fast if I do say it. So let's go here. We've got this pop-up uh, translucent square and this is telling me that this is being identified as an actor. So with that selected, I'm going to make him Sam the alien. And, you know, maybe in this skit, uh, we've got this guy, he's reporting on um, the first couple to be married as a robot and a human. Uh, very romantic. So that's been identified. We're going to go to here, select this square, go over to our characters, select radio bot and click assign. Now, Wonder Studio has identified that we do have a secondary character. And, you know, perhaps if I wanted to make this a robot and a robot marriage um, and assign this character, I can't because I am on the light plan, which means I can only uh, use two actors per project, which may be quite limiting. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, with the robot identified and our alien reporter, uh, we're now going to select select next. Once this is loaded up, we have our render settings. So I'm going to keep this at 720p uh, for reasons which you will soon see, uh, but we can go up to 1080. And uh, we have a variety of different uh, formats, but again, on the light version, we can only use MP4. And then we've got the individual elements that we can render alongside the video itself. So if you want to bring this into Blender to further enhance, perhaps if you feel like that you can add a little bit of refinement and polish uh, to the character, then you can select this and it will render out a Blender file so you can bring it into Blender and further add to the sequence. But if you're an After Effects guy um, and perhaps you want the clean plate to perhaps clean up some stuff, then we can just select that by itself. But at the moment, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to select Start Processing. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> that sequence was nothing more than, I think, 15 seconds. And we've got a 70 minute estimated runtime. I don't know if it is exactly going to be 70 minutes. It might sometimes be faster. It might sometimes be slower. This isn't dependent on your machine. This is all cloud based. So bear this into mind that if you're on a tight deadline or if you want to get like a social video out by a, a specific time, uh, because that's when your audience is active, you really do need to be planning in advance. So that was the run through of using the Wonder Studios project. Now we can see I've already got a number of projects here and it's because I've been seeing what I can do um, with a wide variety of different clips as someone who just kind of wants to do the bare minimum. I want a 3D character uh, that looks great without having to dial in a number of refinements. At most, I would be happy to go to After Effects. So with that, let's review these clips and you can probably see where you're gonna get or what results is likely from this software. All right guys, so I'm in DaVinci Resolve and the goal here is to have a look at how far we can take this software with just a singular click, you know, um, <laughs> as advertised by content creators. Um, or, you know, if it requires a little bit more work, where its weaknesses are, where its strengths are, what looks good, what doesn't look good. As so we've got a wide variety of static shots, sh shots where people are moving, shots where the subject, is, uh, the camera is moving and so forth. So this is the one that we've seen in the introduction, uh, just of myself. I'll tell you what, it might be a little bit better if I stack these and just turn off the layer. And you know what? This does a really, really solid job um, you know, we've got the lighting hitting the correct place. This area has fallen into shadow. This area has some specular highlights, which coincides to where the brighter parts are on my face. Um, this is fantastic uh, for, you know, a YouTube tutorial, an Instagram video, whatever it may be. This looks really solid. And I can only imagine the type of films that I would have created uh, as a young 20 year old back in 2010 if this type of stuff was readily available uh, because it wasn't and you know this sort of stuff required years of, of learning to, to even get it to this level now we of course do have some sort of artifacts going on in the background from where it's created the clean plate if i turn this off we can see 
um, you know, that doesn't even exist. But the way that it's been able to generatively fill the blank space with the color and image data from the surrounding pixels, um, it's, it's done a really solid job. You know, the silhouette of the robot is a lot slimmer than I am. I don't know if that's saying something about myself. Um, but you, you know what, that's, that's really cool. That's done a really solid job. But I think it's worth noting, I am static. This is a 1080p convert. And you know, we do have the artifacts around the back of the character. So I don't know if it would be a case of, you know, if we click this and we go to the effects library, go down to open effects and type in, um, oh, it's by here, I think. Resolve, where am I looking? Stylize, no, I'm not looking for that. Analog damage, bring this down. Let's have a look, what could we use? Security camera, old VHS. I don't know, you know that sequence from Signs where the alien walks across the uh, the road and like the uh, the guy screams, this would look good. This would look solid in, in that example. Um, I just think when you when you want to use it cleanly, you know, there's, there's too much of that in the background. There's too much artifact going on. But, you know, this is what we would have visual effects supervisors for, would be in order to make sure that the actual footage here has some form of green screen in the background or at least a clean plate in order for the visual effects artists to create that and then not have the uh, the background artifact going on but like i said i really think if you were to um, apply some form of you know analog damage to this and and you, you would easily be able to pass off that in the background I think that looks very legit and very cool. And again, I <laughs> gutted that this did not exist when I, when I was a kid. So anyway, let's go back to the first example, uh, which we were working from, which was of the, um, the, the reporter <laughs> reporting on some robot marriage. And I think here, given the scale of the character's head, we're now starting to get like a lot more issue with this. I, I think, you know, the character's head comes into the shoulders and the torso of the guy. Um, so all of this area, which has had to be um, manipulated in order to create a clean plate in the background, it, it just really falls apart. But if we want to talk about some of the positives of this, uh, you know, if I lower the opacity, the kind of like a Snapchat filter, um, you know, his lip movement, his eyes, its head, it's all linked. It's completely linked. Um, there's no, you know, manual animation of the mouth uh, as if this was the an alien from the 1990s. This is all just linked to the guy's movement. There's no tracking data on the guy. We've not got a lot of um, tracking dots. It's all done through the cloud-based software. So you can give it props for that. But overall, again, this, this just isn't really usable in my eyes. And personally, uh, if we knock that off again, I think the light in here falls apart. I think maybe if we were to bring it in and just, you know, knock down the the highlights. Yeah, yeah. That lighting for me doesn't really correlate to the sequence itself. So this one, I don't think it works too well for me. Um, so, okay, so now we've got something a little bit tricky. We've got a guy and his wife walking off into the sunset and we're changing this for a robot and his wife to be walking off into the sunset. And <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's done a fairly good job. I mean, the guys walked off and Wonder Studio has been able to identify that the viewing angle of the guy is facing away. So we don't have the frontal subject looking towards us, but walking backwards. Um, and the lighting is fairly there. I think I would be more inclined to mask this character out a little bit more just to, to blend in with the, uh, the illuminance. I think it's a little bit too bright for what it's supposed to be. But, you know, again, let's negate the aspect that we've got this robot walking on water. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the robot walks on water. It is the future after all. Um, but again, if we look at the clean plate of this, you know, that is, that's phenomenal. I, I think this is where really th this Wonder Studio is really impressing me is that it's really masking out the areas that, you know, if we look in between uh, the robot's thighs here, 
as he's walking. Okay, we don't get the ripples of the sea, but are we really looking at that? Um, whereas if I knock this off, that doesn't even exist, you know? And it's, it's of the right hue of that area. So really cool. But unfortunately, I think the fact that, you know, it's not registering that I think the depth of this robot needs to be lower. To me, again, not really usable. Um, I do wonder if we were looking at more of the advanced plan and bringing it into Blender, would we be able to remedy these issues? Possibly, but I'm looking at this from um, someone who perhaps just wants to use it in DaVinci Resolve and After Effects. So with that done, let's go to our fourth example and again all, by the way guys all of these video clips are from the fedivo library so if you wanted to go ahead and download those you can uh, we've got these two kids or uh, two young adults or late teenagers i can never tell uh, they're playing football in the city and uh, i wanted to convert the goalkeeper to a robot uh, the test dummy variation so i think that'd be pretty cool you know in the future you want to play some football you ring up your friend and you're like, oh, hey, Jane, can we play some football? She's busy. Hire a test, I mean. Uh, you know, this is really solid. This is pretty great. Of course, again, we do have, which has sort of been a common occurrence. I'm really pleased with how it's able to, let's just bring this on top of it. How it's able to, are we off a second? There we go, that's better. Uh, how it's been able to, correctly mask that because again the the girl's silhouette is slightly larger than what the robot silhouette is and it's got the correct color hue data in the background given the fact that it's a chain link fence that is now blurred out um, as to anybody would notice if this is on a social media post i'm not too sure but again you know this is really solid uh as noted in the introduction i'm not a big 3d guy when i have dived into it the thing I've always found incredibly difficult is getting the character to remain grounded on the surface and it's doing it, you know. Um, we've got the shadow falling from the character herself. That's really great. And what I, what I did do to take it up a notch, I decided that maybe we're working in a future where um, robots like to play football against each other. and the character model used on the left hand side is just you know we've got the reflective light on it it looks so good again i really wish this stuff was around when i was a kid thinking about a lot of the stuff i'd be able to make and it you know we've got the shadows coming down his heel touches the floor at the right time connection with the ball goes over to the keeper ball disappears that is an issue and keeper lands great this robot does pop out here might not be an issue if we were to be cheeky and to zoom in and you know what with the ball itself it's not the biggest issue if we go over to after effects and uh, this is um one i've made earlier and we just simply have masked the ball here dependent on its use i think this would be really cool again you might have to apply some sort of uh damage to the clip in order to blend the elements a lot better but yeah jumping back to resolve you know that's that's really cool positions it's sick i really really like that and what i have done here is if you were to select export clean plate uh, we get this so we can see exactly what it's doing for a change and if i were to bring this up top but yeah we can we can see it's done a fairly decent job especially look over the buildings um of of bringing that information together for the robot uh, this is a click of a button. It's not something that I've had to generatively fill myself, then track. Uh, it's all done within Wonder Studios, which is probably why I'm expecting the render time just to be so much. So now we've got this, which is, I've been a little bit cheeky because this is of a guy who's again, kind of like the robot here. He's going out of view. So I've got this clip from the Fediva library guy walking down a mountain but his feet go beyond the peak itself and he does a little bit of a heroic pose here and if we go to what it generated again really cool it's been able to 
mask out the areas and generatively fill them with data that definitely resembles the, the color information from that area. So turn it on and off, we can see it's done a fairly decent job. Lighting on this one, I'm not too overly pleased with. I think it's a little bit too bright for my liking, uh, but let's see what it does here. So, you know, as soon as something goes out of view, I think this does start to become an issue. And we can really see it here actually in this stock video clip from the Fediva library. Uh, we got a guy and woman behind some glass putting a post-it note and I thought what would be cool if this was sort of a, a Pixar looking thing. So there's a wide variety of characters on Wonder Studio using the guy and the girl. You know, it, it falls apart again. These should be behind, but it's just not receiving that depth data uh, to, to understand that. Um, so we do have a limit with stuff. As to whether you would even want to be inclined to possibly just mask these post-it notes out. It would probably do what it needs to do. Uh, but yeah, then of course we have the issue with the pen. Does it, do we even see the lines being drawn on here? So look, does he draw a line? What's he doing? Oh yeah, he's got this. Let's have a look what this looks like. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you know, the moment these characters start to move behind things, um, I'm just not getting it. But again, to play devil's advocate, in the case of this robot, if, if we go to After Effects and I turn on this layer, and we can see where this guy steps. And we just take the pen tool and very quickly, just make a mask around this area, maybe feather it, Two. And now we do have it looking very little. Oh, actually, that mask needs work. Bring that down. Okay, there we go. That's fine. Uh, yeah. So, you know, with a little bit of masking, we do get it. We, we have issues anyway with these boots. Uh, something I'm going to overlook at the moment. But yeah, with a little bit of masking, we do now get the, the depth of the robot stepping beneath that pillar. So yeah, so, you know, some solid results, some iffy results, and some just downright unusable. Um, but I think if you preemptively play around and learn where which shots work best, and in this case, you know, I think the static sort of shot works pretty well, or if you preemptively plan where it's going to be easier for Wonder Studio to pull that background plate, you are gonna get semi-decent results. If you're looking to do this professionally, um, I really don't think that this is there yet. Again, I am on the light plan. I could be completely wrong on the professional plan, but you know, for hearing someone say, this app completely changes 3D workflow, it's cool, but I don't think it does really do that. But the question is, when will it be able to do that? as we keep seeing AI software getting better every single day. So that's that. I mean, there was definitely some decent generated uh, character composites. I do think if I was a Blender user and I was able to extract the mocap and Blender information, I probably could have got some better results. I have been told from our resident Blender expert that this tool isn't entirely up to scratch as is. But what I'm thinking for social media, I think if you wanted to get a little bit quirky and introduce some 3D characters into your scene, it's going to be great for that. But in a more uh, refined professional use, I think this tool is still a good few uh, iterations away from doing such. So I've been Lewis with Fidibo and I'll catch you guys next time.